Well, welcome to the Known Podcast. I'm your podcast host. I'm Dustin Bennett. I'm the lead pastor at Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is our first ever episode, and we're so excited that you're just taking some time today to join us in this conversation. And you know, our vision is to be a space where we can make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. And this is an opportunity for us to come together to learn how we can become known by God and how we can be known by people. And so we're really excited. And thank you for taking some time today to spend uh, with me as we dive into some topics of creativity, of faith, of leadership. And it's going to be super exciting uh, to go on this journey uh, together. And, you know, I hope and pray that as we dive into these topics together, that we can grow, first of all, in our relationship with Jesus, as well as that we can unleash the power of our creativity and that we can actually develop ourselves as leaders. And so today we just want to start a conversation on creativity. And I, I, I think we all want to grow in creativity. I think we all, have, we all want to learn how we can be more creative, how we can get better at you know, problem solving, how we can become more artistic, how we can learn how to write better. I think we all have this, this kind of goal. Maybe it's subconscious that we want to learn how to be more creative. And you know, creativity is actually defined as this. And I find this so interesting. It's the use of imagination or original ideas especially in the production of an artistic work. I think a lot of us, we don't realize that we can be creative even if we're not artistic, even if we are not musical, even if we aren't poets, even if we aren't writers. I truly believe that, you know, when it comes to creativity, it's the use of imagination or original ideas, right? So I think all of us, we have the ability to imagine. You know, one thing that makes humanity different and then a lot of other species is that we have the ability to use our imagination to create better futures. We can use our imagination to see a problem and actually have the ability to think about it and actually overcome something in that that's in front of us, a problem or whatever it might be. And, and I believe that we were created by a creator to create. We were created to create. We were created to do something with our lives. We were created to create something. In, and we need to tap into the mind of Christ. We need to tap into the most creative being to ever grace this planet, Jesus. How do we tap into his mind? And 1 Corinthians 2.16 uh, says this, For who can know the, Lord, the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. So we understand these things that maybe we didn't understand before because of our connection to Jesus, because of our connection to the Father, be, through the Holy Spirit. Through our connection to him, we actually gain access to his mind to think and the wisdom that comes when we actually enter into a relationship with Jesus. And if we want to be more creative, if we want to think with the mind of Christ, we have to learn how to tap into it. We have to learn how to actually tap into the mind of Christ. And I personally don't think that we have the mind of Christ just to make smarter choices, to be less stupid. That's not what I truly, truly believe, or even the, the ability to be more moral. Of course, these things are a part of it. Of course, this will happen. Maybe we'll make smarter choices when we become more like Jesus. The more we will change, right? The more we become like Jesus, the more different we are. He you know, creates a new mind in us. And the more we make smarter choices, and we will become more moral, of course. But I believe that we are to have the mind of Christ in every area. I believe that we are to have the mind of Christ in everything that we do. The mind to be creative. You know, in creativity, kind of how I view it is the ability to see a problem and face it head on without fear or hesitation. The ability to make a choice and say, I'm going to pursue, I'm going to overcome, I'm going to go forward to take on this task, to take on this, this thing that's in front of me, this, this obstacle that's in front of me. The ability to go without fear or hesitation, to just go forward. And creativity is the ability to see before anyone else sees and to create a way out of situations that seem impossible. I think all of us, we have things in our life, these, these problems that come up and our response is, how do we get out? How do we overcome? And, and I believe we tap into the mind of Christ to give us the ability or the idea to say, okay, I, I believe I can actually overcome this. I might be able to do the impossible. And this is exactly what Jesus did here on earth. He saw things before people did, right? He saw things before anyone else saw them, and he created a way out of situations that seemed impossible. And 
I think the question that comes up, at least for me, is, okay, we have access to this mind. We have access to the mind of Christ, the most creative you know, being, the most creative person to ever you know, grace this planet. But how do we tap into it? How do we gain access? Like, How do we get to a point where we're actually using the mind of Christ? How do we gain access to it? And, and we have first have to give Jesus our life. You know, the first step to gaining access to the mind of Christ is giving Jesus your life, giving all that you are to him, right? Because in John 1, 12 says this, but to all who believe him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. When we become children of God, when we give Jesus our life, when we become followers of Jesus, we get access to all that he is. You know, when a child is you know, adopted into a family, not only do they take their name, but they receive their protection. They receive their provision. They, and they receive the pleasure of being a part of this family. They get adopted. They get chosen to be a part of this. And that's exactly the same. We get the inheritance that the family of God has to offer. We get access to his protection. We get access to his provision. We gain access to all that he is. We get the inheritance. We get protection from the enemy. We get provision for the call on our life, and we get direction for our future. We get the mind of Christ. We no longer create in, in, in our own power. We're not creative in our own abilities, but we create with the creator in partnership with the creator, the ability to see a problem and be a part of the solution. And, you know, when we become followers of Jesus, we gain access to the mind of Christ. And we have access to the most creative mind ever, access to this mind. And there's a story that Jesus told in Scripture. And it's just of this man who has two sons, and you know the younger son comes up to him and says, "Hey, Dad, I, I want the inheritance. I'm going. I, 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 there's bigger things for me. I don't want to work here anymore. I want to go and I want to live my life." And so he gets this inheritance, and he, he he gets it early, and he starts the adventure of a lifetime. Right? He's partying, he's traveling, he's spending lots of money, he's living the dream, and then all of a sudden he gets to a moment where he's ran out of money. He, he doesn't have the money anymore. He spent it all on partying. He spent it all. And so one day he convinces this guy just to give him a job. And as he's, getting, as he's working this job, he, he's hungry and he starts wanting to eat the food that they're feeding the pigs. And, and he comes to his senses and realizes, hey, like, this is not what I thought this would look like. This is not what I thought my future was going to be. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. So he thinks, oh, you know what? If I go back to my father and I become a servant, I'll, at least I'll have something to eat. You know, at least I'll have at least I'll have something to eat. At least I'll have a full tummy. You know, it might not be what I thought my future was going to be, but at least I'll have food on the table. And as he's as he's on his way back home, you know, I can imagine me thinking, okay, what do I tell my dad? I just took my inheritance early and I spent it all. What my father had been working for for years and years and years. I just spent it all. How do I apologize? How do I how do I tell him I'm sorry? How do I ask him for a job? And it says that as he was a a ways out the father saw him from a distance and ran to him and embraced him you know gave him a hug gave him the embrace and you know as they're coming back he says hey we're throwing a party for you you know we're so excited that you're finally back home we're so excited that you're here back with us today and and so so he throws this party he gets the best meat he gets the best food and they start having this celebration and then the father realizes where's his oldest son he can't find you know, you know, his oldest son, he can't find him. And, and he goes outside and he sees his son there. And his son is so angry. He's livid. He's so, so, so angry. And he refuses to join the celebration. He refuses to join this party. You know, because he thinks, I, I've never left. I've never asked for my inheritance early. I've never stepped into a place where I've, where I've been disobedient. I've never done anything against you. Why are you celebrating him when I've been here the whole time and you've never celebrated me? Why? Like, I don't understand why this is happening. And then this is what it says, and I think this is so powerful. It says, then his father says, look, dear son, you have always stayed with me. Listen to this. And everything I have is yours. You know, what we learn from this is not only do we have access to the mind, but we've had access the whole time. And some of us, we're not actually stepping into a place where we are 
taking advantage of what we have, actually using the mind of Christ in our lives, using the wisdom, using the creativity, using the things that we have access to. We're trying to do it on our own power, and then we're angry because we say, God, I've been here the whole time. Why haven't I had that success? Why haven't I seen the miracle? Why haven't I had it? And, and I think the Father and God is saying, you have had access the whole time, but you need to start using the access, not just having it, not just hoarding it, but using it to build the kingdom, to build to build his glory, to build it here on earth. We have to ha- tap into the access that we already have, the access. We can't waste it. Don't waste the access that you have to the mind of Christ. Do not waste it. And, you know, I, I believe creativity. I don't, I don't believe it's just practical. I believe that creativity is also supernatural. I believe that God can give us life-changing ideas and thoughts that can make a huge impact, not just for ourselves, but for the world. I think creativity, if you're using it just to build yourself, you're using it for the wrong space. Creativity should be used to change the world. Creativity should should be used to change the, the life of somebody else. The mind of Christ isn't just for you to have access to. It's for us to bring the mind, to bring the wisdom into the world, oftentimes through creativity. And when we read through Scripture, we see supernatural ideas creating ways out of impossible circumstances. It's the Bible is filled with moments where supernatural ideas bring bring an absolute life change for individuals. You know, we see this with Moses as as he's leading, you know, the 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 Israelites out of Egypt as he's leading them into a place where they're no longer slaves. As he's leading them there, they come to the the, the sea and they, they can't cross and there's a lot of people like upwards of like a million people standing there being like, Moses, what do we do? How do we get across this? And so so Moses has this conversation and he says, okay, so he puts a staff in the water and the water parts and they walk across on dry land that's a creative solution to a physical problem that's a supernatural solution and i believe god is in the business of giving us supernatural ideas and thoughts that have the the ability to change things on this planet the ability to, to to lead people out of addiction the ability to to allow people who maybe are walking through a place where they're hungry where they have the ability to 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 get food you know whatever it might be i think that we get supernatural ideas to actually fix some of the physical problems that we have here on on this earth you know jesus moment after moment you read through the gospels you know matthew mark luke and john in scripture read through those there's moment after moment after moment after moment of jesus using his mind thinking being creative supernatural ideas to meet physical problems feeding of thousands of people you know p- putting the net on the other side of the boat and catching a supernatural amount of fish you know we have access to this mind the ability to to go forward to the ability to use the mind of Christ to make an impact on our world not just for us but to impact those around us as well and you know i i have three uh things today that i think might help us when it comes to growing in our creativity three things that i think will be will give us the ability to be more creative that'll maybe help you step out of fear three things that i think will give you the ability to maybe tap into the mind of christ more and what creativity might look like practically for you and whatever you're going through and number one is don't shy away from a problem i think a lot of us we we see a problem and it scares us we we don't know what to do it might be in our business it might be in our family it might be i don't i don't know but we all have problems that come up in our life, things that come up that we don't know how to get through, we, things in our life that we don't know how to overcome, but we can't run away. I think for far too long, so many of us, we've ran away from problems and we've actually stopped you know, seeking Jesus, seeking his mind to say, God, okay, how do I overcome this? How do I make it through? How do I take a step of faith to go forward and overcome this obstacle in front of me? How do I do this? Don't run away. We have to be like, God, how do I do this? I, I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be fearful with the situation. It might be financial for you. and I don't know what it is, but, but whatever it is, do not shy away from it. Because I believe problems are just opportunities to be creative. 
And we need to learn how to problem solve. Again, we all face problems. The most creative people always find a way out. The most creative people always find a way out and not run deeper into the problem. They say, okay, this is the problem. This is the reality. This is what our business is going through. This is what our family is going through. This is what my church is going through. How do I make it out? How do, what do we do? You know, we have to have these conversations where we say, okay, the problem's here. I'm not going to run away. I'm going to face it. But what do I do right now? What do we have around us? What resources do I have? What abilities do I have to actually overcome this obstacle in front of me? We've gotten so good at running away. And it's time for us to stop running and start pursuing problems. Because the most creative people, if you want to learn to be creative, we have to be pursuer of problem. That way we can actually be, bring the mind of Christ. We can actually step in and be a part of the solution to a problem. So that's number one is don't shy away from a problem. Number two is just because you fail doesn't mean you're a failure. I think a lot of us, we failed. We tried something creative. We tried to fix a problem. We tried and it didn't work. We tried one time, as, ah, that's not for me, I, I'm a failure. It didn't work, I failed, I let my family down, I let my business down, I let my boss down, I let my pastor down, I let my spouse down, I am a failure. We cannot let our hardest moments become our identity. Just because you fail does not mean you're a failure. Just because you make a mistake does not mean you are a mistake. We have to stop thinking that we are failures because we failed one time or two times. We have to stop doing this. We all fail. We all fail. All of us. We all have failures in our life. Things that we thought would, would work to overcome a problem. All Things that we thought would have the ability to move us forward. The things that we thought would be there. And eventually we realize it didn't work. And we think, oh man. What a failure I am, man. What a, why, why, why did I even try? Just because you're, you fail does not mean that you are a failure. Do not let failure be your identity. Let failure be an opportunity to learn. Let failure be an opportunity to grow. And don't waste a failure. I think a lot of us, we, we, we fail and we think, ah, whatever, like, whatever, I'll just try something new. It's like, don't waste a failure. What have you? What can you learn from failure? What can you learn from the mistakes you made? What can you learn from, from the things you tried that didn't work? What can you learn from it? Do not waste a failure. Failures are opportunities for us to learn how we can be better. They're opportunities for, for us to learn how we can make changes. Maybe it's subtle. Maybe it's drastic. Make these changes to actually step forward. Do not waste failure in your life. Let it be a learning space, not a destroying space. Do not let failure destroy you. Let failure help you become better. Let failure help you become a better spouse and let you become a better CEO and let you become a better business owner and let you become a better pastor. Let you become a better believer, a better follower of Jesus, become a better spouse. Let it help you become better do not make it become, make you bitter. Help it be, make you better, not bitter. And then number three is this. Get around people who inspire you. Get around the people that you want to be like. Get around the people who are doing the things that you only see in your mind, the things that you imagine. Get around the people who they're living that out. The people who are living out your biggest dream, your biggest desire. Get around people who inspire you to be better. Because the more you spend time with these people, the more like them you will become. If we want to become more like Jesus, if we want to get the mind of Christ more, if we want to learn more about, about what his desires are, what his plans are for our life, get around him and you will become more like him. The more like Jesus we are, the more of his mind we have. Are we allowing his mind to be our mind? Are we allowing his desires to be our desires? Get around people that inspire you. You know, Jesus inspires me. The way he walked on this planet and wasn't in a hurry. You know, he wasn't in a rush. He allowed the moments to come to him and he dealt with them as they came. And he used supernatural ideas that he learned from the Father and brought miracles and brought salvation and brought food and brought salvation to our planet. Jesus inspires me. 
But there's not just Jesus inspires me. There's pastors that inspire me. There's leaders that inspire me. There's husbands that inspire me. There's there, there's fathers that inspire me. And if I want to become better, if I want to become more creative, if I, I if I want to become better at solving problems, get around people who are doing it. Get around people who are inspiring you to be better. Get around people who are inspiring you to, 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 to have more faith, to have more courage, to have more strength. Get around people who inspire you to spend more time with your family, to overcome an addiction. Get around people who are living out the desire and the dream that's inside of you to overcome some of the things that you are struggling with the most. The more you spend, the more time you spend with these people, the more you will become like them. And I think Jesus has to be the one we spend the most time with. You want to become more like Jesus? You want to become more creative? You want to learn how to overcome obstacles? You want to learn how to overcome problems in your life? Spend time with Jesus. Spend time with the one who, who's there for you in the midst of the hardest moment. The one who will, will protect you. The one who will comfort you. The one who will guide you. The one who will provide. The, the one who cares more about you than you do. Spend time with you. So those are three things I think will help us when it comes to being more creative. Number one is don't shy away from a problem. We should become pursuers of problems rather than, than people who run away. Number two is just because you fail doesn't mean you're a failure. Just because you've had a moment where you haven't lived up to your expectations, just because you had a moment where you, where you didn't have the success you thought does not mean that that's your identity. Let failure be an opportunity to learn. Help it, help it make you better, not bitter. Don't let failure uh, dictate where you want to be. Let, let failure guide you forward, not leave you where you are. And number, number three, get around people that inspire you. Get around Jesus, get around the pastor, get around the CEO, get around the business leader, listen to the podcast, listen, whatever it is, get around the people who inspire you the most, and then you'll start to become more like them. When you start looking in the mirror, you're going to start to see, wow, I've grown so much as a leader, I've grown so much as a husband, I've grown so much as a mother because I've spent time with people who are doing it well. Get around people that inspire you because, again, who you are with is who you will become. The people you spend the most time with is who you will become. Get around people who will make you better. Get around people who will speak life into you. Get around people who will be there for, for correction when you step out of line. People that, that, that don't approach it with anger or animosity, but approach it, hey, you know, I, I noticed this and I believe that like, like you're better than this. I believe that, that there's more for you for this. Get around people who, who will be there for you and get around people that are doing the things that you're dreaming of. And I want to encourage you, you know, as we kind of close today, to try and create something every week. You know, if you want to learn to be more creative, which, again, I believe we truly are all creative, it's not just art, it's not just poetry, it's not just painting, it's not just music. You know, really, creativity is solving problems, using our imagination, using our mind to overcome problems, really. That's, again, if we go back to the, the main, you know, definition of what creativity is, creativity is is defined as the, the use of imagination or original ideas. You have something inside of you, an original idea, something that only you have that this world needs. And so, so use that and every week create something. You know, it might be, maybe it's a closet organization system for you and your family. Maybe you're noticing shoes, you know, never making it back on the shelf. They're not making it where they need to be. Your house seems to be a disaster. There's kids' toys all over the place. And you're like, man, like we need to have better organization in our family. Maybe it's time to create a way, a system to help that become more part of your story. It might be, you know, figuring out new ways to provide more income for your family. Maybe it's teaching music or, or maybe it's using your ability to refinish furniture to, to maybe even create more of an income for you and your family. Every week, create something. Maybe write a song or paint a picture or write a poem. You know, create something every week. Not every day. It doesn't need to be, you know, every hour. You're like, I got to create now. It might start slow every week. You know, maybe spend four hours a week creating something. Four hours. You know, that's less than an hour a day. If you could dedicate you know, 30 minutes a day to being creative, 30 minutes. If you can dedicate that every single day after maybe four or five hours a week, I think that's going to really help you grow and being more creative, learning how to, to create, learning how to tap into the mind of Christ, you know, approach like, okay, God, I'm supposed to create and I don't know what, to, what, I, what I need to do. 
Again, the, the biggest thing that we can create is see the problem, be a part of the solution. See a problem in your home, what can we do to fix it? See a problem in your family, okay, what can, I, what can we do to overcome this? See a problem in your business, okay, how can I tap into the mind of Christ? Okay, this is the problem, what are we going to do about it? There's a problem, we all have problems. We all have things that we need creativity, and we all have things that we need the ability to overcome in our life. And I want to encourage you just to remember this one thought. If you, if you forget everything, just remember this one thing today that, that, that we share is that when we give our lives to Jesus, we gain access to his mind. When we give our lives to Jesus, we gain access to his mind. Do not waste that access. You have access to the mind of Jesus. You have access to the mind of the creator of the universe, the one who loves you desperately, the one who knows your story, the one who knows your situation, the one who knows the problem that you're facing, the one who knows what your church needs, the one who knows what your business needs, the one who knows what your family needs. You have access to his mind. Do not waste it. Do not like be like that son who was there the whole time and didn't realize what he had. You have access to the mind of Christ. You have access to the wisdom. You have access to him. Do not waste it. His mind is better than yours. His ideas are better than mine. His thoughts are better than ours. So let's not waste the access we have to the mind of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today for The Known Podcast. And we have new content coming out weekly, and we can't wait to continue the conversation with you. And if you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Known Podcast. We'll see you next week.